six months now. No, we started, started in March, I think. Oh, wow, that's yeah. even longer than that. So we've had it embedded in us, and now is the time for us to share more details about what's going to be happening, and also an opportunity for all of you to ask questions, make comments, just join in. Right? Outstanding. Do you um, want to give the overview of the project, or do you want me to do that, Priscilla? Um, well, I think you start, I can add, um, or if you'd like me to do it, that's fine, too. We're, obviously, we didn't rehearse. We didn't have we a dress did. rehearsal. We did. We talked about this for hours. Um, so here, here's the headline. The Lilly Foundation awarded Sagatuck Congregational Church a $50,000 grant called a clergy renewal grant. We are one of about 180 congregations, we think, who received that grant. And that's for churches out of all denominations in the United States. Uh, so we don't know the total pool of applicants, but we know that the potential applicants is a, is a large pool. So we Huge. feel very, very privileged to have uh, been awarded this grant. And we know that one of the things the foundation looks for is a strong partnership between the pastor and the congregation. And one of the things that I so valued about our application process was discovering along with the team that helped write the grant, uh, those places of synergy that we encountered, which is some of what we'll be talking about this morning, which I think strengthened our application. 15,000 of that grant is for the congregation to support you in my absence and the other 35 supports the activities that I'll be doing while I'm gone and you'll hear more about that in a minute. Uh, so maybe you could just describe for folks what we're up yeah, to Yeah, I, I just want to add on a little bit to the overview that I think um, the thing that's really cool about this sabbatical, Allison, you know, as part of her call agreement, has a sabbatical every five years. Mm -hmm. and um, But this um, sabbatical is going to be not only a sabbatical for Allison to renew, but it's also an opportunity for our congregation to renew and um, re-energize. And, and I think that it couldn't have come at a better time for us. <laughs> We, we all know. Anybody need some renewal? Yeah. Anybody? Right, right. <laughs> and we all know what the last two years have been like. And so when this came, it was just like, wow, it's been dropped in. So it's a wonderful opportunity for Allison, but it is for us as well. Thank you. Cool. Okay. You want me to talk a little bit about what we're doing? Um, sure. Okay. Can you do that next? Okay. What, what's the matter? <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, I just sort of know what I'm doing. But okay. Well, so here's my suggestion. Okay. Based on, on a little bit of what we okay. were imagining. Is, okay. Um, uh, Priscilla is going to ask me a couple of questions. Okay. To invite me to talk a little bit oh, more okay. about what's in my head. I will then ask Priscilla a few questions about what's going on for you all. And then you get a chance to ask your questions. If you are joining us online... You can post your questions in the chat on YouTube or on Facebook, and we have two members of our Clergy Renewal Grant Implementation Team, Bruce Borner and Aaron Canpro, who are monitoring the chat and will share questions, convey those, those questions to us so we can respond, um, so that we can include everybody. Uh, so that's sort of what we have planned for the right. next 15 And so years. Allison's going to share with you why this particular grant application just spoke to her. All right. So the Lilly Foundation invites applicants to contemplate what makes my heart sing. Right? And I actually knew this at my last sabbatical, and when I was making plans uh, six years ago, I used a little bit of that same process of reflection. This is not an opportunity to do the work that I need to do to be an effective pastor. This is an opportunity to play 
in ways that will make me a more effective pastor. It's an invitation for me to do something that sort of lights my heart on fire. Uh, when I thought about that question, I uh, got in touch with the fact that as a young person, I thought I wanted to be a marine biologist because I love the coast, I love the ocean, I love marine mammals, going on whale watches, I love exploring the tide pools along the beach, and I discovered along the way that I am not a scientist. <laughs> so I was not going to be a marine biologist. But what I am is a person who loves the world of which we are a part, including the natural world, and in particular, those marine environments. Um, they feed and inspire me, and, um, and they need our protection. Once I got in touch with that as a possibility that maybe this was my chance to be um, a pretend marine biologist for a few weeks, I looked into opportunities to volunteer and found Go Eco, which is a, a global volunteer organization that has opportunities all over the world. One of those is in the Maldives. And so I will be spending the first of three parts of my sabbatical in the Maldives, which is in the Arabian Sea, just off, not just, but off the coast of uh, the southern tip of India. And it's a bunch of little islands way out there in the middle of the sea. And I will spend three weeks there with marine conservationists doing work primarily around rescuing sea turtles, uh, but also learning about marine conservation in general, and um, perhaps also learning some of what they're doing to preserve the coral reefs. The second half of my sabbatical I'll spend in Costa Rica with my family on a regenerative farm, and then the final portion I will spend on the coast of Maine, somewhere near Kennebunkport, kind of soaking in all of the experiences and spending a little time with family before I come back home. So that's the overview overview. Are you all ready to go in her bag? <laughs> I, have That's joked, it. I have joked that I need a Hermione bag <laughs> from Harry Potter so that I can fit everybody inside who wants to come along because why not? I mean I know what a remarkable what a remarkable adventure this is and how it sounds. So when you think about these experiences what is it that you will bring back to us from that. Yeah. So I trust that you will get back uh, a rested, rejuvenated Allison um, with more stories than you're going to want to hear um, and photos of my time away. And also some uh, added wisdom about the climate crisis and how our oceans and our coastal communities are being impacted by the climate crisis and some of what is being done to restore our planet. That time in Costa Rica will be spent, I didn't mention, uh, I'll be for a week on the Osa Peninsula so that will be a coastal experience. And then the regenerative farm is actually inland. It's called Finca Luna Nueva. I'll be there with my family. Craig, Toby, and Ian will all come. And we will take that time to explore the rainforest. And rainforests are a critical contributor to the health of our world and to the water systems and to the health of the oceans. So I'll be making some connections there. So I anticipate that I'll have some, some newly garnered insights about what's happening uh, in those places, some of the creative, committed work that's being done. And I anticipate that I will uh, come back with a, a newly exercised sense of playfulness and wonder and uh, a sense of having tapped into the ways that God's spirit moves in the non-human world that, that I trust will spill back out into how 
I minister with you back here at Sakatuck Church. Mm -hmm. And also, I think it will help to solidify, because um, we, we do know that this church has a huge social conscience and will maybe lead us a little bit in an area of justice around the environment. So, right? I mean, absolutely. And yeah. um, in a minute, I'll invite you to share some of where the planning team made those connections mm -hmm. during our planning process. Do you have anything else you want to ask me or should I um, come back to you? I, I don't know. I think you've covered it. I, 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 I just keep marveling at the wonder of all of it mm -hmm. and, and that the Lilly um, Foundation had the wisdom to grant that kind of experience to people. So, what do you want to ask me, Allison? Well, Priscilla, <laughs> what are you all going to be doing while I'm away playing in the Maldives with sea turtles and in the rainforest with sloths and, I don't you know, know, whatever else I'll find in the rainforest? I don't know. What's going to be happening here at Sagatuck Church? A lot of things. Um, well, we don't really know all of them yet because you all are going to be involved with the planning of that. But what happened during um, the planning process when we first started talking was we gathered groups of people together and we asked them what they would like to do during the time that Allison was not with us. And we knew that there were some practical things that had to happen. Right, we can't be a church without any kind of a pastor. So we knew we had to cover that kind of um, stuff. But we also thought about how, <coughs> excuse me, during COVID, we really loved being together. When we weren't um, able to meet together and we had these wonderful beach walks and we'd have 25, 30 people taking these walks. And then it sort of led us to, you know, she's doing a lot to do with the ocean and, and water and life on the coast. And it was like, oh, we live in a coastal community. <laughs> the light bulb went on. So we started thinking about what we could do as as. A congregation and came up with a zillion ideas, the least of which is a clam bake or a lobster bake, right, Mr. Borner? But um, so we started generating some ideas. Nothing is set in stone yet, but a couple of things are set in stone that cover the more kind of practical things, but also not so practical. Um, we decided that we would have a theologian in residence here at Saugatuck for the first three weeks that Allison is gone. And the man who has agreed to do this is named Jim Antell. And he is a nationally known um, theologian who really speaks to climate justice all the time and in fact has written a book. Do we have the book, Mr. We do have um, Antel, A-N-T-A-L, <clears throat> Jim Antel. And Jim is, is written this book, Climate Church, which we have available here for people to take or borrow and, and read in return, whatever way we want to do it. Um, and Jim is going to preach He'll do a series of sermons, and they will focus on climate and climate justice. He also will lead some discussions, so that's the first part. But Jim is only going to be here for the three weeks, and Jim is really focusing just on the preacher part of, of Allison's job. So then we started chatting about you know, we really do need some pastoral care during that time. And we actually started talking about this before she even came on board, that Natalie Owens Pike. And we had heard wonderful things about Natalie Owens Pike, so I was like, maybe she would stay. 
and be our pastoral care person. And lo and behold, Natalie has agreed to do that. And so, <clears throat> and I can't think of a better thing, a better person right now. I mean, she's just a wonderful preacher, and I'm sure that the pastoral care that she will provide will be excellent, but she knows us. And so much nicer to have someone who knows us than to have just someone come in that, you know, provided pastoral care. So Natalie will be here, but she also will be helping us do all the planning for these events that we're going to do. So we're going to have a coordinator, but we are also going to need lay leadership on that as well. Um, in fact, I think in the grant, we named that position as the renewal leader. Yes. So Natalie has agreed to be the renewal leader and help us to play together and will also be our worship leader throughout the summer, uh, including during that time when Jim is here. It was really fun, though, the way this whole process came about. I, I have to admit, it was really um, a good team of people. It was... Um, Allison, myself, Bruce Borner, Kim Mathias, and John Canning. And Doug Johnston. And Doug Johnston. Um, that's right, because Doug's not here today. And interestingly, um, uh, John Canning is up in the Berkshires, so he, I hope you're listening, John, he was not able to join us today. But he sent me a message yesterday about Jim Antell. And um, he's really excited about him being here. And this is what he said. I am excited about the growth this opportunity will mean for Allison and for the church. From my work with the UCC, I know that Jim Antell is an outstanding preacher and leader for the environmental movement. We are honored to have him serving as our theologian in residence while Allison is gone. I am also excited that this gives our congregation the opportunity to speak on issues of environmental justice and climate change. Now this is one hope that John has, is that as a result of our activities this summer, Saugatuck would pursue the opportunity to be certified by the UCC as a creation justice church. That would take some time to do, but it would be great if Saugatuck decides to take that time. I think the planning team also saw that being involved in this initiative would put us in a leadership position in this community as far as climate change is concerned. And this Creation Justice Church, which I really don't know anything much about, will be something that we might want to decide to explore, similar to when we became open and affirming, that we went through a discovery process and decided that we wanted to have that label on our church. So that's kind of exciting, too. That's a possibility that might come out of it. So anyway, we've got Natalie here planning during the summer, and then Allison's gonna come back. She can't stay in the water forever. I, 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 <laughs> and I, I promise that I will come back. I'd be so excited. <laughs> no, no. And so in the fall, it's, um, the Arts Committee has talked a little bit about this. Um, and we're hoping to have a photography show that will be both Allison's work and also the work of people in the congregation of, of things that we've seen in our coastal community. So that will be part of it. And we will also have a dinner, right? It, it, that's a catered dinner, right? That means nobody has to bring a covered casserole. <laughs> a dinner, a dinner. It's going to be good. Don't you know how congregationalists always have casseroles? They do. So you don't. We're going to have a caterer. It's going to be great. Um, Part of that was recognizing when we say that this is a time of renewal for all of you, being part of a congregational church means putting in time and energy and 
love and sweat and tears a lot of the time. And we want a celebration that um, allows all of us to participate and not be the ones who are doing the serving in the kitchen. Right. I, I have to say I pushed for that. <laughs> <laughs> I still never learned how to use the dishwasher, but you know, anyway. <laughs> so that is what we have planned so far, but it's only so far. Um, and we need you now to bring your enthusiasm and your ideas to the mix. Um, what? I have one, one little bit of, of late breaking information about that tail end of the sabbatical yeah. and that celebration that, that picks up on what John and Priscilla are saying about where this could lead us. As we imagined the sabbatical together, we talked about how we might share what we're doing with the wider Westport community. And out of that came a proposal to make possible a community-wide lecture similar to the Dr. King lecture that we have been a part of implementing for many, many years. Community-wide lecture with a renowned marine conservationist of color here in Westport to help to advance a conversation about what it means to do climate justice work on the regional level, because when we're doing climate justice work, it is always regional, right? Our actions always impact our neighbors. I am excited to share that we have commitments from the Westport Library, who will take the lead in pursuing that speaker, from Team Westport, and from Sustainable Westport. We met just last week to take the next step toward making that lecture a reality. And I am thrilled and look forward to collaborating with some folks here um, at Sagatuck who might be interested in that particular project um, down the road. So stay tuned for more details there. That's great. And that was part of our planning, but you know, $50,000 sounds like a lot of money until it, it isn't a lot of money. And, um, and so we had hoped that we would be able to pay for that speaker, but or a speaker. So I think that's even better though, that we have engaged our community already. So the word is out there. Just, they're waiting to hear, right? Yeah. It's gonna be good. Um, so I have a question yes. for, uh, for Priscilla and then um, for Bruce and for Aaron, who are the other two present members of our um, implementation team. John Canning shared a little bit about what excites him. I wonder what one thing you might lift out, Priscilla, that particularly excites you about this time. And then Bruce and Aaron, if you have something you'd like to share about what excites you, we'd love to hear from you too. I think what really excited me the most when we started talking about this was the concept of engaging ourselves together. I think this congregation is filled with people who really love each other, but we don't often get together and do social things together. And it became evident, as I said, when we were doing the, the beach walks, that we enjoy each other's company. And so to create a situation like this where we're deliberately planning social events and engaging with each other. I, I just, it just made me feel really good. So that was my, and also, you know, I'm not, I'm not as um, aware, I mean, I'm, in, I'm aware that our environment is in deep trouble, but I have not done a lot of reading about it. And I know that I need to know more information about it. So that's also part of it. It will kind of push me a little bit in that direction. Priscilla. Bruce and Aaron, did either of you willing to come to the microphone and share your own word about this? Aaron is our, I should say, uh, is our, our newest participant. So she has been hearing about this around the edges, but just agreed to join our 
implementation team. So, yeah, I'm, I'm just learning as well, but I will. Um, do we have this microphone on? I'm just checking. Oh, yes. Hello? Yep. Yeah. Um, I was, just wanted to follow up on what Priscilla was, was saying. Um, what really put your gut go into it take off your mask yeah it's okay you, it's okay to leave your mask on okay. and leave yeah. hello there, there you <laughs> go okay. okay that's what our tech team is for <laughs> so i just wanted to follow up on what priscilla was saying um what yeah. i was really uh interested about and um when i read allison asked me if i wanted to be a part of the team and um particularly the climate change and environment um just sort of piqued my interest um, especially because I have a 15-year-old daughter who is very environmentally conscious and mm -hmm. is kind of always, um, you know, reminding me how I could do better. Um, <laughs> and I thought this would be a really great opportunity to engage her and some of the younger um, members of the congregation who have a lot to teach us Good. about that issue um, that, you know, just as an adult, just sort of we can put on the back burner. Yeah. Um, so I thought that would be just a nice opportunity to engage the young people. Cool. Yeah. Thank you, Aaron. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Bruce? So I gave, um, I, I sent a question to Priscilla. Um, my biggest concern is the number of lobsters each person is going to get as a client. <laughs> That's a concern. My, my other concern is um, how much insurance we're going to put on Allison's life because I think that think uh, Luna Nueva is on a volcano. <laughs> so it, it is true that Finca Luna Nueva is south of Arenal, which is an active volcano in Costa Rica. But frankly, Costa Rica is a small country. There is nowhere that isn't kind of close to that active volcano. And I spent three months in Costa Rica in 1992, and I have come home to tell the tale. So. <laughs> That's great. Um, so we do, we have these, I think, nine books of Jim Antal. Did we decide how we're going to distribute those? Yeah, at the, at the end of this morning, we'll come back to that. We've got a little buzz here in, in our mics. I'm just speaking up to our tech team to check on our a little bit of feedback. Thanks. Um, so we'll come back to the books and offer them up at the end. We have a few to be shared around. Uh, and thanks to Bruce for being the one to acquire those so that we can check them out. Uh, apart from those lobsters, Bruce, is there anything else you want to say about what most excites you? Or shall we move on to other questions? I just want to make sure Something you get of them. import? No. I, I All right. <laughs> All right. Carry on. Then while, while you are. Um, the two of you are, are hanging by. Are there any questions that have come in on the chat? And while they're checking, this is an opportunity. I see a hand. If you have a question, you want to come on up to the microphone. Is that Lisa back there? Yeah, it it's is. Lisa. And actually, I believe both of our microphones are live. So wherever you're closest, you're welcome to come on. I have two questions. One is if Allison could explain what a regenerative farm is. And the second is a more general, just the actual dates are bound. Like, you know, when are you flying away and when are you flying back and that kind of thing. Thank you, Lisa. Good questions. Excellent questions. So uh, the sabbatical is a three month sabbatical, runs from June 1st to August 31st. Uh, so it is during the summer months, which means that some of you will be on vacation also. It will be a quieter time. We hope that, that what we're doing sort of augments that sense of rest that you already, some of you, get during the summer. Uh, so I will be back on the 1st of September. A regenerative farm is a farm that is not only organic, so we know about organic farming as a, a means for uh, producing crops that are healthy and keeping the land, uh, not adding uh, anything toxic to the land. Regenerative is one step more. It is proactively healing or helping the, the area to recover. In this case, proactively helping the 
rainforests to recover. So the farm has practices which contribute to the health and well-being of the land around it. I will be able to tell you lots more about what that means when I get back. Uh, but it was actually Craig, my husband, who discovered this farm as we were talking about possible destinations. And I've been in conversation with the owners there uh, because the farm is designed both for tourists and travelers and also for farmers. So we will be doing a mix of exploring the rainforest and probably going on a zip line through the canopy and some crazy fun stuff like that, but also uh, taking tours on the farm that learn more about their practices, um, some of which will translate to farming in other areas like our own, and some of which are specific to protecting the rainforest. Jan? My question is for you. What are we going to do for Allison when we get back? She gets returns to the church. What, what I missed the first part. What am I going, what are what we are going we to do? do for a welcome back to Allison to the church? Okay, so that's the dinner that we're going to have. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a big celebration dinner that's catered so no one has to cook or do anything. Okay. And we're going to have a photography show downstairs in Hoskins Hall. So it will be a big celebration when she returns. We'll maybe even have balloons. There you go. Absolutely. We I, won't let them go in the environment, though. I imagine, uh, so that will be a chance for, for exchanging storytelling, for, for you to share some of what you've done and for me to share some of what I've done. Obviously, it won't all happen in one gathering, so we will surely continue to share our stories with each other through that season. We will also mark my departure and my return in worship. So Sunday, May 23rd, the next to last Sunday in May, will be the Sunday on which we formally bless this season of renewal for me and for the congregation. So mark that date. It's the Sunday before Memorial Day weekend. So I will be around for that one more weekend, Memorial Day weekend, before I depart and then on a date to be determined, a Sunday when I get back, there will be another um, in worship marking of my return and, and celebration as well. Uh, we, have a we have a question from uh, Bob Mitchell. Um, are we planning any congregational cons conservation efforts such as cleaning up the beaches or waterways? Do you want to pick that up first? Sure. Bob Mitchell, that sounds like a wonderful idea. And we will add it to the mix. And maybe you want to spearhead that. I, we're very open. There's, I, As far as I am concerned, and I think the rest of the team is concerned, it's whatever you guys want to do. Um, and Natalie is going to be there to help us, guide us through that. and. If that's something that people have energy about, it sounds great. Yeah. I think the goal in general is, uh, I don't know, have we even said, used the phrase embracing our coastal community this afternoon? We haven't, this morning but it's, yet? it's, yeah. That it's all over of, the place, right? Yeah, yeah. I, that was something that we landed on early on, that this is an invitation to embrace our coastal community. And so that is both an invitation for us to take advantage of the rich natural resources around us uh, and to hang out together and also to tend to those spaces. So what we are sensitive to is not creating um, lots of work during the summer. We want to do things that feed our bodies and spirits. I love walking along the coast and picking up trash. We've done it together before as a congregation, and it's super satisfying um, and meaningful. And so that may well, in fact, be something that, that works well for us. And uh, I think I just lift up that we've talked about finding that balance between uh, really creating a time that is a renewal time 
uh, and also discovering ways to renew the land around us. Right. Is that fair, Priscilla? I think so, definitely. Anybody else questions? <clears throat> well, we have one part of this on whole plan that is a little bit of a loose end, and that is <clears throat> Jim Antell and his wife are going to be living here in Westport for three weeks, but we're not sure where they're going to be living. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, we are seeking a housing opportunity for the Antels. Um, so we would love it if you all would think about anyone you know, or if you are going to be away during that time and would be okay with somebody staying in your home. I think they would like to have a private situation Space, yeah rather than staying in a guest room at somebody's house because they're going to be living here for three weeks. Um, so that's a very important piece. Frankly, we do not have the resources um, in this grant to cover that. And as you well know, um, the cost of either hotels or a VRBO or something is prohibitive. I mean, if we had to, I guess we would have to do fundraising. To, to cover this. So please, all of you, put on your thinking caps and um, maybe we can come up with something. While you're thinking about that um, and digesting what we've shared, I'm, I'm going to invite Natalie, if you would like, to say a word about what caught your ear when you and I first started talking about this opportunity because while we thought of Natalie early on, it was only in having conversation that we discovered just what a good fit this is. <laughs> <laughs> Little given, did we know. <laughs> yeah. Given some of Natalie's own passions. Yeah. So would you just say a word, Natalie, about that? Sure. Hi everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um I'm gonna leave it on out here, yeah. So one thing that immediately attracted me to this project together is that um, I love the ocean. I am um, a Minnesotan, so I was born and raised in a landlocked, very lake, you know, lots of lakes in Minnesota, but no ocean. But I was raised by um, an East Coaster. My mom is from Boston, and so I had always been raised with the love of the ocean. And so living out here, it has been such an opportunity for me to get to know the coastal community more. Um, and there's such a beautiful uh, story and also um, uh, practices that we can learn from that the ocean shows us in regeneration and renewal of itself that we can learn from in our own bodies and that we can um, see happening in the environment around us. Um, so my love of water and the ocean, and I, um, some of you know that in college I was on an improv comedy team. Uh, some of you may not know that, but um, now you do. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I've just been thinking so much and praying recently about the need for play and joy and um, laughter and how renewing it is to our spirits when you just really have a good belly laugh, right? And um, so I'm not promising that we're gonna like form a coastal community improv troupe. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows, I'm open to anything. But I do promise that I am bringing that spirit of um, improvisation and also just humor and joy to what we will be doing together this summer and looking for ways for each of you to kind of step into that place of joy and um, to me that's a, a posture of both giving and receiving so that's what I'm excited about thank you Natalie yeah. thank you thank you it is do you feel that I did I feel the the longing for that, that kind of joyful space, right? Um, 
during a season which has been so weighty. And so I am, I am really grateful that Natalie has said yes to this and that you'll get the gift of, of her uh, leadership in your midst. I thought of one more thing uh, that I am expecting to take away from this time. This sounds super fun. It is also for me um, a pretty big risk. There are things that I am getting ready to do that I have never done before. I discovered snorkeling while in Hawaii during my last sabbatical, which is part of what sparked my thinking about this sabbatical. And um, I snorkeled for one whole afternoon about three feet from shore. <laughs> and I was super proud of myself for, for doing that because as much as I love the ocean, the ocean is also a vast and scary mystery to me. Yep. Um, I don't feel in control in the ocean the way that I do on land. Um, and uh, so this is an invitation to me to take some risks that I think will be good for my spirit. Uh, that zip line that I mentioned through the canopy sounds awesome. <laughs> Until you're standing up there. <laughs> there's also, there's also um, rappelling down waterfalls on the list. And this was to entice my children to come with me. Um, I am reading a book right now by New York Times correspondent Damien Cave. The book is called Into the Rip. And it's a book about his experience learning to swim and train as a lifesaver on the coast of Australia, where his family moved to open up uh, a branch for the New York Times. And this has been a really compelling read for me as I think about the role of risk in our lives. So as we reflect together on what it means to rest and to be renewed and to laugh together and to cultivate some joy, I also think unavoidably we are in a time that feels risky. The world around us is in transition. We don't know where we're headed. We don't know what happens next. Um, we do know, though, that we only discover the possibility by stepping out in some ways that can feel risky. So I hope you will be praying for me um, while I discover that edge and lean into spending time in the ocean and in the rainforest. And I pray that you might find some ways as a congregation to take some, some small and accessible risks and that that might cultivate, um, stir up some space for shared reflection when I get back. Thank you, that was, that was a risk to even <laughs> say what you did. So you're on your way, Allison to risk-taking. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Anybody? Questions? Comments? I, I think it, 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 everybody needs to take risks. That's and, right. And, you know, it's like kind of sitting on like a thorn bush. And you're like, oh, gee, this doesn't quite feel right, but I need to get off this thorn bush. <laughs> There you go. Yes. There you go. Thank you. I love that. I, I, I am so grateful to all of you who are here. I am grateful to our implementation team, to John Canning, who is with us um, remotely, and Bruce and Aaron and Priscilla. Uh, I look forward to our getting those specific ideas and collaborating with Natalie. And um, if you have particular thoughts about housing for the Antals uh, or ideas that you'd like us to do together, please share them with a member of the team. The books, uh, 
I think what I would suggest is um, Bruce and Natalie have the books over uh, on the side here. I'm going to, to hold back one or two in case you are watching online and hope that you might get your hands on a book. The book is called Climate Church, Climate World. It's written by Jim Antal. It is uh, addressed primarily to church leaders, including clergy and lay leaders. So for example, there is a chapter on what it means to preach about the climate crisis. There are other chapters that talk about why the church is a natural leader in uh, addressing the climate crisis. So if you are interested in looking at the book, you may find that it's not something you read cover to cover, but that you gravitate to particular chapters. Uh, but take some time, take a peek, and then you can bring it back um, to share with somebody else uh, who might also like to, to take a read. We have nine copies on hand. You can also, if you're the kind of person who likes to, to uh, write in the margins and highlight and fold over corners like me, you can also go online and find a copy of the book for your very own. What else would you add, Priscilla? Just thank you uh, to all of you, and, and I'm looking forward to playing. Yes. And I love to laugh, if you haven't figured that out. <laughs> yes, we are. I will be finding, I'll be finding humor in all of it as well. I may also be hanging out with a bunch of 18 year olds. Yeah. Because, um, the, very often it's uh, college students who are participating in, in some of these adventures. So, um, so yes, it'll be a, an exercise in humility and in risk taking. And, um, and uh, I am profoundly grateful. Would you join me in just offering a prayer of gratitude as we conclude today. Holy One, God of love and laughter, you who delight in this creation that you designed, you who created the platypus and the octopus, the ant and the antelope, you who designed fish in every color and birds on the wing, you who formed each of us in your image, we give you thanks for the blessings of your creation. Abide with us during this season as we seek to renew our spirits, be blessed by the gift of creation and return that blessing to we ask it, trusting that you are already moving among us, that you will stir up our love and our laughter. In your holy name, and in the name of the living Christ, we do pray it. Let the people say amen. 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 Thank you, friends. Have a good rest of your day. And goodbye to all who are online. Take care. <laughs>